all my tubbies and my Teletubbies. It's me, she the true love. I am I'm not at work today. Actually, to be honest with you, I'm in Buffalo. I'm in Buffalo right now because I have a friend of mine who's in hospice and they are um dying. Actually, they're dying. You know, anytime someone's in hospice, that means that they're on their way out. So I'm here in uh Buffalo. But I still want to uh, make videos because I'm sitting up here waiting to see what's going to go, what's going to happen, and um, not waiting on the person to die. But oh, it's very emotional. It's very traumatic for me. And uh, yeah, the thing is, we're going to focus on how narcissists end up because I have had so many of my tubies. They keep saying, "Well." I'm not the one who committed adultery. I'm not the one who messed up. Why is it that I end up alone? And you're not alone because you're single. You just ended up single. You got family. You got friends to uh, share your life with, really. Think about the Golden Girls, living single, single ladies. Yeah. And to be honest with you, uh, Tubies, that's what my, my dream is. I want to live like the Golden Girls. I really do. Okay, let's stick to the subject. Uh... How is it that I end up alone? And this is what I get so many emails and so many phone calls from a lot of my tubies because they be like, but he, he's with somebody else. Yup, she's 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 all on Facebook with him and she's all on Twitter and Instagram. He's kissing her. He's showing the whole world how he's living his best life. How does he end up living the best life when he's the one who screwed up? So... The the, the 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 women and I I understand where you're coming from because I used to feel the same was to somewhat you know I actually I was just so grateful that Jehovah God <laughs> removed this character from my life and and and, and sometimes God just keeps these other people in their life to serve as a distraction so they'll stay away from you because my ex he was he was he he, he had anger issues he was dangerous so it was great that Jehovah God and Jesus Christ looked out for me to keep him distracted. And maybe that's what God is doing for you. He's keeping them distracted with other women or other, whatever the hell they're going through. And, um, instead of you seeing it as a curse or like God is not executing justice in your behalf, maybe you should see it as <laughs> it's a blessing. It's a blessing because as long as they're distracted with someone else, they're not bothering you. You know? They're not sitting up there trying to run you over with a car, trying to scope you out at your job, trying to do all kind of crazy stuff, constantly blowing up your phone, messing up your Facebook or your Twitter or your Instagram page with nonsense. He's distracted. Okay? So that, I'm not going to say that's the way... You should, I, sh that, that's the way you have to see it. I'm, th I'm saying that's the way you, you kind of need. Let's use the word, not have to. Let's use the word need. That's the way you need to see it. Why is God keeping this character distracted? And another thing you have to realize, if he treated you badly, the Bible says that you're going to reap what you sow. How can they reap what they sow if they never have another person in their life. No, they're going to have to have another person in their life who's going to treat them just as badly as they treated you. They have to have someone else in their life who's going to be more narcissistic <laughs> than they are. So you have to think about those things. You're upset that he moved on. He got another woman. Yeah, this other woman's going to treat him like garbage. She's going to make his life a living hell. Because I had my girlfriend. She was like that. She's married. Married to this man. Her husband. He was cheating on her. And what ended up happening? Hmm. She found out that he was cheating on her. How did she find out? The, 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 the other hoe. The hoe. Uh, side piece. She put a note on my girlfriend's car. She put a note on the car and let my girlfriend know that my name is so-and-so. And, -so, and yes, your supposed, supposed man has been with me for over three years. 
over three years, okay? If you want to discuss this any further, she left her phone number. <laughs> if that ain't a blessing, that is a blessing. So, of course, my girlfriend called her, and they sat and talked about it, whatever, whatever. So, of course, my girlfriend, because she's like me, because you know what's up. You cheat on Sheila True Love. You cheat on any of my girls, my homegirls. No, no, no. We, we ain't trying to hear none of that. She kicked him out. He went over to the other woman's house. Guess what? Within two, three weeks, they were constantly arguing and fighting, fighting to the point where the neighbors, the neighbors had to always keep calling the cops. Okay? Guess what else happened? He ended up getting AIDS. He didn't get HIV. Whoever the hell he was sleeping with, they had full-blown AIDS. They gave him AIDS. He died of AIDS. So my girlfriend, you see how God intervened with that? God protected my girlfriend. And that no good cheating broad, whatever the hell, I don't know whether she got AIDS or not. I, I, don't, I didn't finish all of that story. But the thing is, he died from AIDS. My girlfriend has his daughter. But that's, that's cool because he had an insurance policy, right? Uh, the daughter got all the money. His daughter from my girlfriend. She bought herself a new Lexus. <laughs> a new freaking Lexus. And they got money in the bank for days. So just because something may appear to look good on the outside for him or her, Honey, that's not necessarily true. Now, what I want to share with you right now is how these narcissists end up. Look at how they end up, for real. And, and when you're looking at this, I don't want you to feel any pity. Because women, empaths, you know how we are. We feel pity, empaths, whatever. No, don't feel no pity. And I want you to also realize that, you, you know, a person has hurt you. And you prayed and you prayed and you prayed that your heavenly father will step up for you and your heavenly father will be the one who's going to execute justice in your behalf. Sometimes it takes 20 years. You, I know, I know you hate that. I know you hate it, but sometimes it takes 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. If you don't believe me, let's think about Bill Cosby. How long has that clown been sitting around there cheating on his wife? Let's think about what's his face that's locked up in jail. Uh, I believe I can fly. Yeah, you believe you can fly, nigga. You need to fly. <laughs> R. Kelly. <laughs> He's inside. Have you heard the latest news? He's going through hell, man, in jail. Everybody's taking a turn on his rectum. Everybody's raping that nigga because everybody wants to be able to say, yeah, I, 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 was, I don't use profanity. I fucked R. Kelly. I fucked R. Kelly. Everybody said I fucked R. Kelly. He's getting fucked every <laughs> which way and up. And even though he may come out, he's going to come out with one hell of an experience. It's all in the news how he's getting raped on a regular basis. But look at how long it took. For that nigga who lays up here with women who are young enough to be his daughter, his granddaughter. Okay? That's called a pervert. But look at how long it took for him to reap. So my sister soldiers and my tubies and all of my empaths never sweat the small stuff. It may not come. God may not answer your prayers when, when you want him to, but he ain't never late, honey. He knows how to hit you at the right time. Okay, hello, holla, check this out. One, two, three. Grab one more. Oh, that I'm blind. I'm dead. Yes, I'm blind. I'm blind. Others are ridden with cancer. Many have serious mental illness. All of them are old. And a few will never get out alive. Now, the reason why I wanted you to see this is all these dudes, and I, they would never be called men. Now, you know how many good women these guys had? 
They had good women. God blessed them with what, what? What did God create women for? Let's let's keep this real. They created women to be a man's helper, to be like you know I'm, I'm supporting you, baby. I got you. Um, yeah. And and these dudes, they had nothing but good women, and they treated these good women the way they treated you and me. They didn't have no appreciation. And they kept thinking in their mind, in their stupid little little brain, that they was going to get away with it. Yeah? Really? Okay, let's see if they got away with it. Take a look. The United States gives out longer sentences than any other place on the face of the earth. Europe, Europe looks, looks at us like we don't know what we're doing. It looks like, like we're crazy. In this special investigation, Fault Lines gains unprecedented and exclusive access to prisons across the United States and discovers a booming population of elderly inmates. Open fire! We ask, what's the true cost of America's lock them up and throw away the key approach to justice? Joseph Harp Correctional Center in Lexington, Oklahoma, holds more than 250 elderly and disabled offenders. There you go. It was created three years ago in response to a massive explosion in Oklahoma's elderly prison population. There you go. Yep. Our fastest growing segment is the inmates that are the age of 50 and over. Uh, we have about 3,700 now. That's grown almost 200% uh, in the last uh, decade. And projections are we're going to continue to grow at about 45% a year. When is not just when I'm not just because of uh, enhancements to punishment, uh, tough on crime. 85% laws that require you to serve 85% before you're even eligible for parole. And, and then the advent of life without parole. My name is Plutarco Hill, and uh, my number is uh, 48713. I received that January the 16th, 1948. Plutarco has the oldest inmate number in the state. He's 86 years old. 66 of those years have been spent behind bars. He's escaped from prison 10 times. So you're as good at getting out of prison as you are getting in? Well, whenever uh, my health was good. We got over, I can't think of the name of the little town where that U-Haul trailer was at. What are you serving for now, this sentence? Uh, this sentence is a murder charge. How long ago? 1947. What's your sentence? Alive. Which one are you? Uh, I'm not there. I'll come on. And this is what life means for Plutarco now. A small section of a dormitory with a few black and white photographs of his family. He's outlived all of them. Elderly people in prison. So they'd be given extra consideration for relief. Well, yeah. Yeah, I do. Can you explain why? Because they're harmless. Plutarco's not alone. In fact, he's part of a growing American trend. In the last decade, the number of prisoners aged 55 and over has grown by an astonishing 75%, partly because longer sentences began to be handed out in the 1970s and 80s as the U.S. took a tough-on-crime approach. And the older a prisoner is, the bigger financial drain they pose. An elderly inmate costs around $70,000 a year to lock up. Two to three times more than younger offenders. Older prisoners suffer higher rates of health problems, functional disabilities, impaired movement, major diseases, and mental illness. My world wears white in a day of black sleet. It hides bitter cold with its pale purple feet. 
grinning, rotted teeth, wanting more, more, more. Mabel Bassett Correctional Center is Oklahoma's largest women's prison. This state incarcerates more women per capita than any other in the U.S., twice the national average. They, too, are growing old behind bars. We kill the world with hate and neglect. Estella and Mary may look like two grandmothers now. passing their time reading and writing poetry, yes, we and they are, but they're also convicted black. killers. Smile with your broken teeth, morning in the morning, to nothing but debt. You bet we'll reap, and it won't be wedding light. I didn't have a choice of what I did. It was either kill or be killed. And I chose to live. That it was a survival thing. Estella turned 60 in November. She's been behind bars for 13 years and hopes to be released in 2014. Can you tell us what kind of impact you think your incarceration has had on your family? Well, it's been especially hard on my grandchildren because they're always wondering why come I can't go home with them when they come to visit me. And, uh, and they get upset. Like, why did you do it? They ask me, why did you do this? You know, and explaining to little kids like that, that you took somebody's life is really hard. The rising number of elderly prisoners and the price tag for that trend comes as state budgets are being squeezed across the country. Oklahoma has been hit particularly hard. The second round of budget reductions uh, took a, a lot of our treatment. We have no substance abuse treatment uh, contractually or otherwise at medium security now. And I know you've been to some of our medium security facilities. So we have to go back to our 10,000 plus volunteers, uh, people that are retired professionals, uh, people that work with faith-based groups, our prison ministries, and ask them to do more to fill in the gaps. Those of you that have made a decision to serve Jesus Christ this week. <laughs> On a recent Sunday evening, the Westmore Community Church Band is doing just that, playing a concert for the inmates at Joseph Harp Correctional Center. Numerous prisons we visited in Oklahoma were on lockdown because they didn't have enough officers on duty to provide security. Staffing in the Oklahoma prison system is at 75%. Officials told us they were operating in warehouse mode storing people with little to no rehabilitation efforts. Most of the prisoners, young and old, that we talked to spoke about how hard it was to be granted parole. Unlike every other state in the U.S., all parolees in Oklahoma must be signed off directly by the governor. It's part of the political landscape where politicians don't want to be seen as soft on crime. You'll never find somebody running for elected office uh, in the House or Senate that's going to have a platform of. So hi, my Tubies. What we're going to look at right now, we're going to look at narcissists who are abusive and how you can protect yourself from them. What you should do. Here we go. Hospital on the hill Where we took no one He cut his own way Woke some man A man who showed up A man who dreams of rest And kitchen Thank you. 
is a meal every home is a yourself that's right the name of this video so you can know hold on it's called the fight against domestic violence so there you have it my tubies I love you and I want to say I really appreciate your gifts or your donations of seven dollars or more for me answering your questions that you regularly email me about, and God knows you do, and I appreciate that. This is how I supplement my income so that I don't have to work. Oh, actually, I work more than two jobs. I have three jobs, but so I don't have to work four jobs. How about that? Because, you know, I work with the uh, state, and I work, I'm a published author. I write books. I'm also, I don't have one or two channels. I have three YouTube channels. And I work, yeah, so I don't have to have a fourth job. Yeah, thank you. Because if I had to work a fourth job, I would never have the time to provide the information and the encouragement that so many of my tubies constantly thank me for. I get, I, 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 let me tell you, I get notifications every day, at least 20, 25 notifications. Thank you, Sheila, for helping me. Thank you, Sheila, you helped me change my life. Sheila, guess what? I went out and got a job. I used to be at a stay at home mom. I'm no longer that. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Freak, thank you, Sheila. I want to say thank you, tubies. Thank you, my tubies. I love you so much. Again, I want to thank you for the extra work and the donations and please keep the emails and the calls coming i love you i don't have to tell you that i love you so much until next time bye for now